Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. So today we're gonna to take a look at creating a custom lens distortion profile. So all right guys, you asked for it, you got it. You wanted to know how to create one of these distortion profiles inside of Aftershot Pro 3. So why would you do that, right? So for anyone that doesn't know, for example, if you're shooting with glass that's old, let's say 20, 30 years old, right? Most likely, doesn't matter if it's Aftershot or Lightroom or any other package, they're not gonna have this profile in there. That means that any type of distortion is not being accounted for or not being corrected. So we need to make a profile to make these corrections. So we're gonna make a profile for, for example, this lens. So first thing that we have to do is we have to come up with a test image, some type of grid. This right here would be absolutely perfect. Now what I did is I created this for you guys so you don't have to create this grid, all right? If you go over to my website at jchristina.com forward slash grid, once again, jchristina.com forward slash grid, you'll be able to download this grid, that's what we're gonna use for calibration, so that we can get this lens exactly to where it needs to be. Now, once you get this, you're gonna print it on an eight and a half by 11 sheet, and this is it. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this to a wall or something rigid so that it doesn't bend. For me, I use a piece of cardstock. Now, why do we do that? Bottom line is, is we have to make sure that our camera and the image is exactly parallel. We're gonna use a tripod for it, and hopefully your tripod has a spirit level into it so that you can get that axis just right so it's perfectly straight. Now, if yours does not have one of these bubble levels in it, here's one that goes right into your hot shoe. I have them over at my website. They're really, really cheap. Go pick one up. I love this thing. I stick it into the old cameras like this. It just goes right into the hot shoe like that. You can stick it into one of the new cameras. It doesn't make a difference what it is. It goes right into the hot shoe. And then you can look down on it and take a look at this bead to make sure the bead is perfectly center. That's what's so mission critical about getting this just right. So I shot it with my 5D Mark II with a 24 to 70 piece of glass. I'm just using that as reference and then we're gonna do some modifications to it. Let's go take a look. So all right guys, here's three images. One's at 24 millimeters, 35 and 70. Let's just take a look at the 24 millimeter image. Here we go. All right, so now just looking at this immediately, I can tell this has some barrel distortion or fisheye going on. It looks like this is poking through right here in the middle. Now, if you can't see it easily, what we're gonna do is download a grid to put over this. Now, I already have it downloaded, but as you can see under plugins, there's something that says grid. Yours might not have that yet. Now, how you get that is you come over here to get more, then click on plugin manager, and right about two or three down, it says grid. Go ahead and click where it says free and it will download grid to your package. Now we're gonna head over to plugin. We click on grid and here we go. We can hit thirds or golden section or we can even do squares to whatever size we want. Let's go ahead and hit ah, golden section. That works fine. So as we can see here, it is not correct. I can see that barrel still poking through. Now, what we're gonna do is head over to the details area. Head down to the bottom and down here you can see if I click on database, it'll say Canon, 5D Mark II, and I'll say 24 to 72.8. It's taken the XF data from this file and said, hey, look, he shot it at 24 millimeters and this is the camera and lens that he shot it with. If we hit enable correction, as you can see, it just got rid of this fisheye effect. Let me turn it off again. And now we have this fisheye going on again. Now, let me go and turn that back on. And if we click on manual, as you can see, it's made some corrections to first order, second order, and third order. What is that? First order has to do with barrel distortion. Second order has to do with pin cushion distortion. And finally, third order is mustache distortion. And in here, we can make corrections for any of those. These corrections, we can then save out. Let's go ahead and, for example, do a correction on this specific piece of glass. Let's make believe. I'm going to go back to the database and, well, this is a Minolta. Um, go down to model. Well, 
This model is not there. It's probably 30, 40 years old, whatever. It's a long time. It's not here, but we're just going to hit Alpha Suite Digital just so that we are creating this specific profile under something. From here, we click on manual. We can reset everything out and now we can start playing with our distortions and fix, quote unquote, fix the distortion for this specific lens. Now I'm gonna make something crazy here, guys. I'm gonna make something that's gonna look more like extreme fisheye. So let's go ahead and do maybe a plus 25 on the first order. And then under pin cushion, we're gonna do a, uh, let's do a plus 0.8 just like that. And then I'm going to hit enable correction. And there you go, guys. We got crazy fisheye going on, right? We can now take this and save it and then use it maybe as a fisheye profile. Or if it was absolutely perfect, we can now load in that specific profile for this piece of glass and everything will be perfect. Your, your pin cushion will be perfect, your barrel distortion, your mustache, as well as everything else, including vignetting and so on and so forth. I'm gonna go ahead down here and hit save, and it's gonna say your profile is saved. Do you want to save a copy to share? I'm gonna say, yeah, let's go ahead and save a copy. Let's call this fisheye. So we call this fisheye and I hit save. And that's it. Just like that, we're all done. Now, if I reset everything back to the way it came, and I'm gonna go ahead and load the fisheye that I just created. And now, as you can see, we have this crazy fisheye back. Bear in mind, guys, sometimes you'll have a piece of glass, for example, like this 24 to 70 that I have. And I go and take a look at my test shot and it's slightly off. It's not exactly right. I can go and make those slight corrections in there, hit save, and then every time I take a shot with that 24 to 70, 2.8, it will go and load that new profile every time and make those corrections. It works out great. So that's it guys. Go ahead and make those profiles for your older pieces of glass or even your new glass and share them with your friends or the community. If you like this video, as always, give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel so you get all of my rants and helpful how-tos, tips, and tricks whenever I come out with them. And don't forget to head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all of the tools that I've invented for photographers just like you. So that's it, guys, for another video. I'll see you in the next vlog. Take care.